I am a voice actress. I have voiced characters in shows like Pokemon, where I was Dawn, uh, Officer Jenny, Cynthia, many, many creatures. I'm also the voice of Emily Elizabeth in Clifford the Big Red Dog. Really? Which is, yeah, so I can do that. Uh, and I am currently starring as Zuzu Boyle in the new Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc V episodes, which hopefully will start airing in the U.S. very shortly. Our friendly neighbors to the north in Canadian land already have those cool English dubs, but we're waiting for that. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about acting for voiceovers. Now, you know, this is a this is a panel, it's a discussion, but I really always love to use audience participa uh, participation especially from that one, the tiny one who just came in. She wins every award in my book. Um, I've been very fortunate to learn, remember you, to learn about voiceovers uh, while doing them and not having to worry about keeping my lights turned on, paying the bills, things like that. Because I started when I was young. Um, has anybody here ever thought about possibly acting for voiceovers or, or doing voice acting? Anybody here who just kind of just likes Pokemon and wanted to hear me come and do some fun voices? <laughs> that's cool, because I mean, that's fine too. Um, the, really, the, the great thing about what I do for a living is that it doesn't feel like work. Uh, it, there are many times that it is challenging or that I can be frustrated with a project. Um, things don't go the way I want. But at the end of the day, I, I'm really proud of the work that I get to do, um, and I like it. I think that whatever you end up doing in your life as a career, hopefully you don't wake up you know, every morning and go, it's time to start another day. So I'm really, really fortunate with that. Um, my very first animation job, for those of you that were at my spotlight yesterday, does anybody know what my very first animation job was? My very first animation job was on a show called MTV's Celebrity Deathmatch. <laughs> it doesn't get more it, like pop culture in, in my head than that. Um, so I'm like, yeah, I'm like bringing it way back. So Celebrity Deathmatch, for those of you who don't know, uh, was an MTV claymation show where they would have two celebrities fighting it out in the ring to the death. <laughs> And I had the privilege of playing Christina Aguilera versus Britney Spears. Um, I'm out of the bottle, and I'm gonna rub you the wrong way. It was so much fun. Do I sound anything like Christina Aguilera? Not really, they didn't care. It was about the acting. I recently also had the pleasure of working on uh, a project called Shaq Fu. I don't know if anybody here has heard that. So that's yes, how, like, I heard there was a reboot coming out. It's the reboot! So I, I had the pleasure to work with Shaquille O'Neal and I played a celebrity voice in that. Um, of Paris Hilton. Oh. Paris Hilton. <laughs> again, they were like, well, we're not looking for voice matching. We're looking for a good actor. So again, I keep saying this word acting, 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 and I keep talking about voices, voices, voices. Um, it doesn't matter how many great impressions you do, impersonations, if you can make your voice go really high or really deep or make silly sounds, what it comes down to at the end of the day is the acting. Um, so who here can tell me what is an emotion? Emotions are? Happy, sad. Yeah, they're the way we feel, so happy, sad. Um, but then to break it down, so, so happy, we have happy because I just won the $1.9 million billion dollar or whatever it was. I did not. Anybody get more than like a number? We're still here. So still here? I, I have to tell you, I would still be here even if I had won the Powerball. It's always such a pleasure to come. Truly. Uh, okay, no. Uh, there's happy when you win the Powerball. There's happy that maybe uh, you have a delayed opening for school. You know, you get to sleep in late, uh, happy because somebody, you know, bought you ice cream. <laughs> so it runs the gamut. We have that whole meter there. And knowing what's appropriate and an appropriate emotional response is really, really helpful when forming a character. 
So I had some hands go up and they talked about some, the, you know, they're like, oh, we just want to hear you do like Pokemon voices. Who here, can you just raise your hands again? For those of you. So I see, all right, so let's talk, yeah, who's like, um, let's talk about some of the, let's actually talk about uh, the character of Dawn first. Um, Dawn, I got a call many you know years ago when, when Diamond and Pearl started that uh, they're looking for a girl to be a new character on Pokemon, is how it was, it was phrased to me. And I was like, how am I, Pokemon? And I was like, oh, Pokemon, okay. Uh, you know, and I went in and I auditioned and my audition process is very similar to an audition process if I were auditioning for a movie or a TV show or a commercial. Um, they're looking for me to take a script to examine those lines and break it down and create a character. I was the first person to do the English character of Dawn. Um, sometimes, for example, with Emily Elizabeth on Clifford, that's an established character, and I had to do a voice match and take over from the original person who had started that. Um, so the, uh, the, the process is a little bit different, but in terms of creating a character, so those of you who, who watch and love Pokemon, who can tell me some different character traits about Dawn? Anybody? She's, yes. No need to worry. No need to worry. Well, that's definitely like her catchphrase. Yeah. So when I hear no need to worry, I say optimistic. Yeah. Absolutely. She's optimistic. She likes to look on the bright side of things. Now, let's take Dawn's catchphrase of no need to worry. Now, I say she's optimistic, so it might sound something like no need to worry. Or how about, though, if I am trying to make someone feel better? Um, somebody give me a situation. Uh, yes. Uh, someone just lost like a Pokemon contest. And okay. Kind of down, and they don't really feel like they can keep. Is going. it somebody that I love, or is it somebody that it's like? Someone you barely love, you you like barely know. <laughs> well, like you need to guess the feel sorry for. Them. No need to worry. I don't know them that well. What if it's Ash? No need to worry. It's going to make a difference who you're talking to. So if you have a phone, you want to take some notes about this, I think this is all going to be very, very valuable. I teach all over the country in terms of voiceovers, and people are always very surprised. They go, well, I don't have any acting experience. And I'm like, well, we should start there. We should, no, seriously. You know, I have people that they're like, well, I've been, you know, working and I've been doing this job for 35 years, and they say I have a great voice. And I'm like, okay. That's great, you have one piece of the puzzle. Now let's make it a complete package. So using Dawn's catchphrase, no need to worry. Somebody give me another kind of personality trait that maybe Dawn isn't. Yes, oh you were like, oh. It was on the tip of my tongue, I totally forgot. Um, so Dawn is optimistic, she's friendly. Sarcastic? Sarcastic, no need to worry. How <laughs> about angry? Why am I angry? <laughs> Let's see. Because again, Someone's didn't win the Powerball? Pikachu. Somebody's wife? <laughs> I have to think about this. Uh, hold on, because I'm, I'm saying, because I'm saying no need to... Somebody betrayed you. No need to worry. No need to worry. No need to draw on the wall! <laughs> to worry because I'm mad. So what you've done, what's your name? Alan. Hello, Alan. <laughs> you from Florida? Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. So Mr. Allen set us up with a couple of really good things here. He's given us a couple of things to really complete a picture. Number one, we have an emotion. So they want me to express anger. Number two, we have a character, Dawn. We have a character who has a relationship with people. He said Team Rocket and he said Pipla. So I established the relationship between me and Pipla. 
Um, Piplup is absolutely my best companion and friend and Pokemon. And of course, um, I'm angry at Team Rocket. I have a relationship with Team Rocket. They are always meddling. They're always doing what's not right. They never play by the rules. And I think for Dawn, that's really frustrating. Um, as frustrating as it gets for Dawn. Uh, because, oh, a rainbow! <laughs> um, so let's see, so no need to worry. But I'm angry because Team Rocket has stolen Piplup. And who am I speaking to? Alan. No need to worry. <laughs> and in my head I'm thinking, I've got a plan. I'll get him back. You know, and, and so you, you have to imbue that, that sense in there. Um, so I have these really cool prints that somebody, an artist, made for me. And it has some of my more famous Pokemon characters in there. And I want to go through and kind of do some of these voices for you. And I really want to concentrate on the creatures. Because as far as, oh, thank you, Water Fairy. As far as, <laughs> as, far as acting goes, my friends, um, when you have to say one word over and over again, you really have to be a strong performer. Now, has anybody, because I mean, like I Google and YouTube just, you know, everybody, um, my, my, uh, you know, my favorite thing to do is, uh, is watch the woman who voices Pikachu. Now, did you know, here's a Pokemon fun fact, every single, well, 99% of all of the characters in the Pokemon dubs in English are all done in English. The only character that is the same in Japanese and English in every version is Pikachu. Absolutely. Did you guys know that? You're like, no, no, we did. So, yes. Pikachu um, means, um, well, um, in Japanese, Pikachu is a sparkle, uh, I forgot the last word. Sparkle, Sweet. Sparkle what? Sweet. So, let's think about what the name means. Sparkle, squeak. I think that's perfect for Pikachu and for what that actress has done for her, or for, for him, for Pikachu. Um, I like to watch her face when she performs. Now, let's do, uh, let's take a look at um, Happini. Happini happens to be one of my favorite Pokemon. I just think Happini is uh, just always there to help people feel good. Happini likes to make people feel better and, and is just a genuinely fun character. Um, so for me to voice Happini, uh, you know, what happened when you sound like, happy, happy. So that's just your standard, you know, like you do, happy any voice. Um, but now, of course, we have to talk about situations and scenarios. And happy has to stay in that range, but start expressing emotions in different situations. Or, in some cases, have full conversations, but only saying hap, happy any, hap, happy any, hap, hap, hap. Happini, happini, happini. Those are the only variations that I get. Um, so for this, let's see, who would like to, who would like to try a voice with me? Yes, come on up, what's your name? Hi, I'm Kim. Hi Kim, nice to meet you, I'm Emily. Nice so, to meet you So too. come on up here, you're gonna, you're gonna come sit right here with me. Oh boy. Yes! <laughs> so you're taking notes, which is wonderful. Uh, Kim, so let's, Let's talk about Happini, and you probably do not have the same kind of, of vocal range uh, that I do. Um, my vocal cords are, are nice and long and thin, and yours are probably a little shorter um, than mine. So let's see if you can go, Happini! Um, all right. Let's see uh, first, I'm going to try something. That I, might, I might, accidentally, might accidentally break here, but... <clears throat> nope. Yep, see where, <laughs> see where it fits. Good. Now take it down into to more of your your natural range. All right. Happini. Good. Now now try and go. Happini. Happini. Good. Okay. So what we did right there is what we did by elongating the p. <laughs> we said p. <laughs> <laughs> what we did by elongating that p is we're actually learning how to use your voice and manipulate your voice in a healthy way to produce sounds. Um, so that's on a technical note. Really great. So now, let's hear your Happini again, where it feels comfortable for you. Happini! Happini! Good! Now let's, that was good! 
Oh, uh, here's a secret in voiceovers. Don't judge yourself. Sometimes the weirdest sounds come out of your mouth. So there's like whole files, I'm sure of me, like with like breaks and cracks and squeaks, probably, you know, like burps, you know, or hiccups. I had the hiccups once in a session and my engineer was like peeing on the floor, like rolling his laughter. I was like, great, so I'm sure there's like a special file for everybody out there, but you don't have to worry about that. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is that your opinion of what your voice sounds like is the one that usually matters the least. Uh, I've been doing voiceovers for about a bajillion years at this point, and that's a, an approximate number. But I'll tell you that sometimes it's still very difficult for me to listen back to myself. Uh, I'm very critical, very critical of my performance. Anybody here, you know, that it happens, or you hear yourself or you see yourself in a picture and you're like, take it again. You have to learn when it's good and learn how to trust yourself. So what you did there, just give yourself more credit. Um, so let's try Happini! Happini! Good. Now we've kind of worked on, on a voice. We know Happini's character traits of being um, friendly and kind and sweet. But how can you make Happini sound disappointed? And Happini is disappointed because Happini doesn't get to play with the other Pokemon today. They're not coming over for a play date. Happini. Uh, Good. What? <laughs> What did he do? To the hesitation. Hold on, yeah, so he, hesitation. Hesitation is a great one. Now, uh, what else did he do? He slowed it down. He slowed it down, so he hesitated. Also, the rise and fall of the tone was really, really helpful. Happy me. So sometimes it helps to go, now, now I want you to, to think that's okay, but say happy me. <laughs> happy ne? Oh, uh, happy ne? Good, try it again, and I still want you to keep that. You're disappointed, but you're, you're conceding. Conce That's okay. Happy ne? Good. Now you were actually able to imbue or to put in that sigh in there. I absolutely have the freedom for most of my uh, Pokemon to do things like that. Happy me. Happy me. So now is Happy me. I'm gonna tell you that you did a great job. Happy me. Happy me. Happy me. Excellent work. So there's a couple of things in terms of acting that we just went over. Again, thank you so much, excellent job. It's never easy to be brave and voice acting is all about being brave. Um, we've talked about pacing. We talked about finding a tone that's going to be, uh, well actually we didn't, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we talked about pacing, we talked about breath, we talked about placement. And I wanna get back to that placement. Oh, we obviously talked about emotion being a, a huge part of that. I wanna get back to the part where we talk about um, placement. Now, I have the vocal capabilities to sustain over a long period of time. Sometimes I have to record for hours. And then sometimes I'm going, shit. Oh no, uh, oh. Luxray, Lux, Lux, Luxray. Um, these are not microphone tricks. This is, this is, you know, what I have to do with my voice. It's not manipulated. I need to make sure that I am capable of creating a character that I can then sustain for long periods of time. This is really important. So you could have come up and maybe he would have given me like one good squeaky, and then that would be it for the day. So we have to be able to create characters that we can maintain over long periods of time. So in terms of creating characters, who here does impersonations? Like who here has characters that they love? Yeah, what's your name? Um, Nona. Nona. Hello, Nona. So what kind of characters do you like to do or that you? Generally, like, higher pitched and squeakier ones. Okay, so are there, like, any shows in particular, or, like, things that you can bring out right now? I do Flowey from Undertale. Okay, so we have a Flowey from Undertale, because that exists. But tell me some of the character traits. Um, 
He's really malicious, even though he sounds like super high pitched and sweet. While he sounds like and is always smiling, like he'd be some super happy, friendly character. Right. He just kind of wishes death on himself and everybody. <laughs> Nihilistic. Yeah. You guys are great. Okay, so <laughs> this is how you create your own characters. Now, my hope for each and every one of you, if you want to pursue voiceovers, there is work out there. The greatest thing, I'm, I'm, I'm from New York City. There is some work that I only exclusively do in New York City. There is some work that I only exclusively do in Los Angeles. Some producers and some directors need to see me, my face, myself, my person in their booth and work with me in person. That has been the case since the dawn of, of recordings and that's fine. However, not everybody is like that anymore. And the great thing is, is that technology lets you do voiceovers from anywhere in the world. I was the network announcer for MTV networks for many years. So every time they would say, coming up next on MTV, a new episode of something ridiculous. <laughs> you know, I would record pages and pages and pages of dialogue. But sometimes I would be recording those pages and pages of dialogue from the back seat of my car or in a hotel room, in a closet, or on the beach. How is that possible? Technology, wireless connections. So getting, hi, good to see you. So having um, <clears throat> the understanding that there are going to be some jobs that you're not going to be able to do if you do not live in Los Angeles or New York is fine. But know that there are a lot of places that you can look for work. Um, if you have a demo or you want to make a demo um, for animation, that's going to be your best tool, along with a microphone that's really good for your voice and a very easy way to record yourself. Um, all of these things can be very simple for startup. I never like wasting people's time and I hate to see people waste money, too. Um, a lot of people have recording studios that they put into their house that make it, and like, I'm not talking about like $25,000 booths here, I'm talking about like $250 worth of equipment that they can do. There are a couple of websites um, that work with actors from all over the world, um, men, women, children, um, you know, from everywhere, and one of them is uh, Voices123, or Voice123. Um, all of them, uh, and there's, there's a couple of other websites uh, where you can look and search for jobs and see what looks legitimate. Most of them are paying jobs that you can do, like, in your jam jams, which is nice, by the way. That's kind of a big perk about voiceovers, like, you think that you could, like, work in your jammies. Sometimes you can, which is really great. Um, so going back to creating those characters then. So we have all of these uh, character traits and these emotions that we talk about for voice acting. Um, that's really the heart of what, of what it is that you're doing. So now we look at a character like, let's do, let's do Ambipom. Uh, I love Ambipom. So Ambipom is loyal, mischievous, outgoing, uh, any, any other personality traits for Ambipom that we can think about? So we put all of these, she's like, oh. We put all of these personality traits together, and of course, Ambipom is fashioned after what type of real animal? A monkey! So I think about all of my monkey noises. So first thing I have to do is I base it on something that's truthful, and you know, we talked about a character that, this all comes full circle, I promise. <laughs> we talk about a character that you know or that you like, and we call that an archetype. Everybody familiar with that term? Some of you may or may not be. So we talk about that and we talk about, oh, well this is kind of like uh, so-and-so, you know, or oh, it's like uh, from Jake from Adventure Time or whatever it happens to be. Um, and Ambipom, I think about uh, like a simian or a monkey and I think mischievous and loyal and kind of fun loving. And I come up with, <coughs> Um, and Ambipom evolves from those character traits and those personalities. So let's have another volunteer. Let's see who can come up and do. You think? You want to try it? All right. Anybody else? Come on up. 
What's your name? Hi, Viviana. Hi, Viviana. Okay, so let's see. So, Ambipom, the first thing we have to do is just surrender that we're kind of going to sound a little silly. <laughs> so, we're good with that? Okay, so let's start by just going, hey. Hey. Wait, Let's see. It might have. Oh, try it now. Hello? Okay. Good. Now, I actually want you to physically make yourself go. Yeah. <laughs> Even more, like really go for it. Like, like really silly. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so don't judge yourself. Remember, remember, don't judge yourself when creating a character. Okay. So what else can we do to add Ambie? Let's try Ambie. Okay. Ambie. Great. Excellent job. Uh, let's try. Eh, eh. Good. Now I want you to almost think like, hey, like you're almost smelling something bad. Everybody go like you like smelled something kind of funky. <laughs> we have to be really good about using those parts of our voice. Now we're gonna go. Even more, like bigger, bigger. Okay. So you see when I, even when I'm doing voice acting, I really use my face and I really use my body. Just the same way that you're going, it's gonna help you give a better performance if you are able to physically personify what that character does. Voice acting is the hardest type of acting, Viviana, because you do not have the ability to show your audience anything. They can only hear your voice. So when I close my eyes, I want to almost imagine that Viviana is going, Okay, but you can keep your eyes open. <laughs> it kind of helps when you close your eyes, though, in a sense. Like, um, you get more into it. Well, there's a problem with that. Does anybody know what a problem with closing your eyes when you're recording for a show like Pokemon could be? Well, you could miss the cues. Absolutely. Wow. We were in front of the microphone. So you could move in front of, the, uh, away from the microphone, but the other thing is that you're recording to picture on Pokemon. The cartoon has already been drawn. It comes to us from Japan. So you have to be able to watch and, and match the mouth flap that comes there. So you have to be able to keep your eyes open. Also, if you close your eyes when you do that, it could, it could sound like you're pooping. <laughs> like, like my, I have, I have kids that when they were babies, they'd be like, <laughs> so you want to be really careful of that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of bite sounds that sound like you're pooping. Like when you think about it, again, it's our job to make sure it doesn't. Um, voice acting, it's glamorous. <laughs> I now said poop and pee. This is really great. Um, okay, so let's try Ambi. Ambi. Excellent job. Okay, and now let's do Ambi Palm, who's like really <coughs> excited and jubilant because he gets to play with uh, Happini for the day. Ambi. Great. Now let's let's take that Ambi Palm, and I want you to I want you to say Ambi Palm, but I want you to think uh, in your head. This is awesome! Here, I got it. Okay. Abby, Excellent job! I love that. That was fantastic. Really great. Let's let's have Ambi Palm be upset because Ambi Palm sees someone trying to sabotage Dawn. Ambi Palm. Excellent. Now, really good job. She didn't even think about it. She did it. Sometimes too much thinking is not a good idea. But let's talk about what she, what Viviana just did that right right there. We're going to talk about dynamics in your voice acting a little bit. I run into this a lot. We have a microphone. I can speak very close to it. That's great. We're going to get into mic technique. Um, uh, for those of you that maybe do come from an acting background or have experience, maybe you've done a school play, you always have your teacher telling you, you know, speak louder, speak louder. You don't have to worry about that in voice acting. Let your engineers make the adjustments with the microphone. You worry about giving an honest and truthful voice acting performance. So, you did not have to worry about keeping your tone loud 
that wouldn't have been appropriate for what Ambipom was feeling at that point. Um, and it was very brave of you to be able to trust yourself and your instincts, Ambipom, to be able to go down low uh, and, and really adjust those dynamics. So, things that we've discussed so far, we've discussed dynamics, pitch, maintenance of a character, um, being able, screen. yeah, looking at the screen. At the screen. This <laughs> is good, we're putting it all together. Give it to and a round of applause. Ooh. Excellent job. Um, what about when you have to create a character from scratch? This happens, so right now we're entering into something very exciting uh, in New York and Los Angeles and all over the country. It's called pilot season. Pilot season exists for TV shows, it exists for um, animated series. Pilot season is when the networks decide that they're going to make brand new TV shows to market to the networks and hopefully they, and they make one episode and hopefully the network buys it and they pick it up and they create more episodes. The pilot is the very first episode of a TV show um, and there's some really great and very exciting animation projects coming out. Um, None of which I can talk about. <laughs> However, uh, you know, this is part of what I get to do and people will ask, hey, are you interested? Do you want to come maybe be a part of this? And so I have to decide if that's something that I want to do. Um, you know, and if it is, I have to create that character. So again, talking about voice acting and creating characters, sometimes I look at some of the characters that I have voiced before and I look at maybe a character like Emily Elizabeth and I look at a character like Dawn, and I look at the similarities, and I look at the differences, and that's my, you know, you can start by creating an archetype. Um, Emily Elizabeth is innocent. She is, has anybody here ever seen Clifford the Big Red Dog? Do you know it? So, uh, hi, my name is Emily Elizabeth, and this is Clifford, my big red dog. Oh, Clifford. So Emily Elizabeth almost has like a little, like a little hook in her voice that I love. She's just, pardon? Um, it's a little bit of a nasality. I think, I think it's also a what I would call a glottal sound. She she almost kind of places things in the back of her throat, just a little bit. Um, but she really is a a truthful and honest character. She enjoys simple pleasures in life. She enjoys spending time with her family and her friends. Um, and I think about all of those things that make her special, but it's the situations that we put her in that are really going to define the character that she becomes. So I would love to get, come on out, hooky. <laughs> now remind me uh, of your name again, because I know we met. Uh, Jessica. Jessica. I was like, it's like, but it's not. It's, I keep making up names that end with an A for her. It's okay. It's okay. She's like, that, that's our bond. Now, now, you actually had a very interesting story when I met you yesterday. You learned to speak English through cartoon. Yeah. So can you tell everybody about that? So I'm originally from Ecuador, and it, in the afternoons they would show Sailor Moon and Knights of the Zodiac. Like, like they would, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday would be Sailor Moon, Tuesday, Thursday would be Knights of the Zodiac. So my family and I, we moved to US when I was seven, and a, in Cartoon Network, oh, do you want me to start over? No, 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 okay. no, 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 oh, so, right. so I'm something for you. So in Cartoon Network, uh, I saw the series Sailor Moon, and uh, my young seven-year-old brain saw Sailor Moon in English, and in a week I learned how to speak English fluently. <laughs> so Sailor Moon taught me English. <laughs> like you do, so that's pretty, that's pretty great. Um, and, let's see, I was looking for this. One particular script, I wasn't allowed to print any of these out because uh, of proprietary information. Um, but I really believe in letting uh, people experience and work with brand new material and have them, uh, come on, come on. Aha, maybe, hold on. It's coming, he's coming, okay. Um, I really believe that being able to work with authentic material that you have no preconceived notions about is really, really important to kind of stretch your brain as a voice actor. I like using uh, scripts that are relevant, um, characters that you could actually end up playing. Um, you know, we have a Bugs Bunny. We already have 
uh, you know, Mickey Mouse. Exactly. We have those. I mean, every day somebody comes up to me and they're like, so, uh, you know, I do a lot of impersonation, so I think I should get into voiceovers. It's, we already have all those people who do those things. It's great to, to base it on. I have a downloading symbol, like this is like the end of the world. So, um, frustrated emotion. I mean, I have no words right now. <laughs> Voiceover actors is speechless, so ridiculous. Um, so while I wait for that to download, I wanted to um, work with you on an original script. Okay, this is an 11 minute pilot. Uh, I can't tell you the name. They're looking for natural vocal style, kind of rough, for lack of a better term. Perhaps unpolished is more accurate. The request is for non-cartoony voices with character, unique. They're also hoping to find actors with improvisation abilities. Excellent. So, Lennon is 12 to 14 year old sounding, natural and real. And then, Little Bubble, almost a baby voice. Now, open to kids and adults. Character design, let's see, is attached, I can't show you that, sorry. Um, but I want you, now, let's talk about this character of Lenin. Lenin was just described as being natural, real, and unpolished, right? But now we get down, and here's the description. Speaking in a high-ish, youthful, enthusiastic tone. It's completely, in my mind, it's, some of it is contradictory to what we were just told. Yeah. Natural, kind of rough, unpolished, and then we talk about like a high-pitched, enthusiastic tone. Okay, so. That would kind of be a little bit like Applejack from My Little Pony, because she's, okay. she's like, you know, country-ish. Okay. But it's. But not so as she's lower. thought as like an archetype, somebody that she can be like, okay, this sounds like this could be good for me. Now, Lenin is a natural born leader, which would be great if she thought things through. <laughs> Instead of just thinking about the consequences of her barely thought out and way too ambitious plan, Lenin just goes for it. Even when things go wrong, Lenin is too optimistic slash stubborn, to admit it, optimistic and stubborn, enthusiastic, natural born leader, okay. Uh, why should she, and everything she's done, uh, why, sh uh, why uh, Lenin is too optimistic slash stubborn to admit it. Why should she? Everything she's done has worked out before, so why shouldn't it now? Now, while Lenin may be impulsive, she's never intentionally mean or hurtful to anyone including her enemies. Lenin really wants everyone to be happy and express him or herself, which has led on multiple occasions to help those she probably should be stopping. Okay, so they gave us a lot to work with here to create this new character, right? Now, Lenin is reacting in this first line <laughs> to Gluco mentioning that his grandma is weird. So Glu the, the conversation that Lenin has is with, actually, let's not do that one. Um, okay, no, no, we're gonna do Lenin reacting to the fact that grandma's kittens are taking advantage of her. Okay. <laughs> well, it is interesting. And again, they want it based in reality. We have to accept the reality of the situation in which we're presented as actors, which means that the kittens are taking advantage of grandma. <laughs> of course they are. So, take a look at that line. Just read it out loud for us in your natural voice. <clears throat> the line is, it doesn't matter how cute these kittens are or how much I want to kiss their oh so soft little bellies and scratch their little ears. They're taking advantage of grandma and I'm gonna tell her. Great, okay, so there's the line. Now, I want you to think about this character, the character traits, as a voice actor. She's like, let me just adjust my mic here, excuse me. I, I felt like I was pulling behind her. 
share. I'm like, why, why is this inclined back? Yeah, we don't want to do, I, I, I don't think I've ever fallen out of my chair while recording, but I think there have been times that I've come close. I've been like, Rah! Okay, so let's talk about this. So the kittens are taking advantage of grandma. What are you going to do about this? Tell her. No, you're going to say, uh, I don't care. Enough. She's gonna say, I don't care. I don't, it doesn't matter how cute these skins are or how much I want to kiss their oh so soft little bellies and scratch the wheel ears. They're taking advantage of grandma and I'm gonna tell her. Great, so now let's talk about some words that I like to call like sparkle magic words. Okay, I, I mean, he's so technical here. I call them sparkly and magical. Who here knows what onomatopoeia is? We learn about it usually like third, fourth grade and then sometimes we, uh, we, we forget. What's onomatopoeia? Um, a, a word that means a sound, like a whoosh, bang. Yeah, so like whoosh, or or <laughs> bang. So in voice acting, especially when we're able to create these new characters, we have a lot of ways that we can make those words sound like what they say. So when we say scratch those weedle ears, or we or, say or, or, uh, kiss soft, Yep, so soft, maybe soft would be like one of those like nice sparkle magic words, similar to onomatopoeia, but no. Um, the exact definition, which is why I call them sparkly magic words. <laughs> um, so on the first part of this line, I want you to be defensive in your choice. So when you say, it doesn't matter how cute these little kittens are, or how much, and then I want you to start and imagine that you're actually scratching them and touching them, and they're like hypnotizing you. So think about that, and all of you have your, picture that in your head, what that, what that would look like. You're surrounded by these adorable little Puss in Boots kitty cats. And they're saying to you, they're like, I wouldn't do anything, I wouldn't do anything wrong. These kittens are taking advantage of grandma. Doesn't matter how cute these skins are, or how much I want to kiss their oh so soft little bellies and scratch their little ears. They're taking advantage of grandma, and I'm gonna tell her. Excellent job. Okay, I'm gonna make one more adjustment. So a lot of times, this is how we build a character. When I work with professionals, if I were coaching a professional voice actor, this is the exact same steps that we take. Um, so the next thing is, is that you kind of worked out your pacing. So, uh, you know, she's indignant and she's defensive and she's like, well, I don't care, uh, you know, how cute they are. And they want me to scratch their bellies. And I want you to have this moment where you kind of shake out of it, which by the way, don't wear jangly earrings in the booth. Uh, and scratch their whittle ears and then have a beat. They're taking advantage where you snap yourself out of it. But here's the really important thing about voiceovers, guys, is that we have to be able to hear and understand every word, okay? Every single word is in there for a reason. So we have to make sure that we can understand you. The best way to do that, especially if you're not doing it to picture, is to slow down. I do a lot of audiobooks, and the very first thing I remember hearing is that I have to speak just a tad slower than I think is normal because everybody has to be able to catch up and hear it for the first time, okay? At the end of the day, the way I'm speaking now doesn't necessarily sound like I'm speaking a little bit under tempo like a normal person would speak, right? I'm clear, you can understand me. So let's try and actually slow down, but keep up the energy okay. in your performance. This is really important. Okay, let's All try. Right. Ready. <laughs> okay. Um, it doesn't matter how cute these skins are, or how much I want to kiss their oh so soft little bellies and scratch their little ears. They're taking advantage of Grandma, and I'm gonna tell her. Good. I want you to just do the very last part. They're taking advantage of Grandma, and I'm gonna tell her. They're taking advantage of Grandma, and I'm gonna tell her. Great. So that was excellent. So, I'm going to take a stab at this line. So, let's see. Let's see. So, it's high in. It's okay. Uh, let's see. So, tell me some of the character traits that we had for her. She was enthusiastic, optimistic. She's got. 
She what? Stubborn. Stubborn. Kind of oblivious, though. Like, well, she, she just... But she doesn't realize what she's doing. I, but, like, like, why? I mean, of course these kittens are nice. They gave me pizza. No, but, dude, like, oblivious in another way. Like, how they were saying, like, she doesn't realize that she might be helping the wrong people, you know? She's kind of like, well, everyone's nice. Everyone's like me. You know? It's like when you give that homeless guy a dollar, and then he goes and, like... Get a yeah. nice beer with it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. But like, you know, <laughs> maybe that was not the right analogy. <laughs> uh, and then of course it's important to know who I'm speaking to because if I'm speaking to my great uh, my great grandma uh, versus speaking to my school teacher versus speaking to my little brother or sister, it's always going to sound different. So let's say that I'm speaking to a friend, to a peer, um, my best friend, uh, somebody that I'm very comfortable with. It doesn't matter how cute these kittens are, or how much I want to kiss their, oh, soft little bellies, or scratch their little ears. They're taking advantage of Grandma, and I'm going to tell her. Um, but what I really want to do is I want to get up. Actually, I'm going to pick this up. Uh, I'm very physical. So it doesn't matter how cute these kittens are, or how much I want to kiss their, oh, soft little bellies, or scratch their little ears. They're taking advantage of grandma, and I'm gonna tell her. So I get very physical when I perform. And a character starts to take on, maybe it doesn't sound so different from my natural voice. And that's okay too. It's not always about putting on a voice. It's about using what makes you unique and special and being able to maintain that and then making good acting choices. Um, I would love to take a few questions. There is so, so, so much that we can continue to talk about and go over. Um, I do coach, I'm available like Skype and FaceTime. I work with a lot of different people. If it's something that you're thinking about doing, um, make a decision that's right for you. Please don't be unrealistic in your choices. This is very important. There are plenty of people out there that I think will be like, oh sure, yeah, I'll work with you, I'll take your money, let's do like, you know, 15 sessions and we'll charge this much and uh, we'll get you set up. But you know what guys, if you're not able to commit to the time that it takes to really learn it, um, and people have full-time jobs, there are plenty of people that do this part-time, but don't expect to do it part-time and make full-time income, okay? I want you to be really, really realistic about that. Um, if you uh, have a, an accent because you did not grow up here, please do not expect that you're going to get work for every single cartoon <laughs> series out there. Yeah. Know your type, know what you are capable of, and then do your best at that. Well, still learning new skills, obviously, and growing, but be realistic. If you're, um, if you're, you know, a woman who's over the age of 65, chances are you're not going to be playing eight to ten year old sounding little boys. I mean, maybe your magical voice does that, but chances are that's not going to happen. Um, it, it, be realistic, truly, truly. Um, and then be a fan. Enjoy cartoons. Watch them. Listen to them. Listen to them with your eyes closed. Um, see if you can separate the voice performance from the music and the effects. See what that does if, you know, in your head if you isolate that. Are they giving a good performance? Are they committed? Are they telling a good story? These are all things that you as a voice actor really want to strive to do. Um, if anybody has any questions about voice acting or me, I'd love to take them. Um, I like your bow, by the way. What's your name? It, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Um, I am a drama teacher. Excellent. Um, so I was wondering if you had any tips mm -hmm. that I could just share with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, be brave. Feel safe. And be the kind of actor that people want to work with. What I mean by that is obviously be brave. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and try new things. Feel safe. Know that you're in a trusted environment, that the people that you're with, that you can count on them to support you. And be the kind of actor that people want to work with. Treat other, you know, what is it, the golden rule? I want to always be the type of actor that people say, uh, oh, Emily Bauer, you should work with her. She's a really great actress, but she's also a great person. I want to treat people with kindness, and I think that that is going to go so much further sometimes than having, you could be so talented and people are like, oh my God, I can't deal, I can't deal with her, she's such a diva, or 
you know, you're not gonna hear, hopefully, hopefully, people saying that about me. Although I've gotten into a very funny Instagram thing with another celebrity guest. <laughs> we have like a whole thing going, so, uh, at Acting with Emily, keep, stay tuned. Um, but also to uh, read and train and be imaginative. Just keep working. And also, I'm a singer as well. Does that have any, like, can I put the singing voice? As Absolutely. I had to sing Happy Birthday for an audition for Nickelodeon yesterday. Oh. Um, and they gave me very specific direction. They needed me to sound youthful, and they wanted a very straight tone so that, you know, no vibrato, anything like that. So that was specific to that. But I sing all the time for, like, Clifford. Um, you know, a lot of cartoons, absolutely. Um, and hopefully you're taking good care of your voice as well as a singer. You do need to take very good care of your voice as a voice actor as well. Yes. Hey. Uh, Hi. So, well, again, uh, but uh, earlier you mentioned you sometimes record from the backseat of your car. Okay, so, yes. <laughs> what kind of totally what do you use for that? What kind of what? Right. What kind of, what kind of uh, Great question. I use a mobile recording studio rig, uh, which consists of my laptop. Oh. Um, I do not have a USB microphone, but you can have microphones that plug in directly to your laptop. Um, I typically record with um, a Neumann TLM-103. That's my job, man! It's a nice mic. However, um, there are, okay, a lot of things in life are like sushi. Here is an Emily Bauer life lesson. <laughs> A lot of things in life are like sushi. You never want to look for like the best deal on sushi. You never want to get the, the lowest price sushi you can find. Chances are you're going to end up with a bellyache, okay? However, the difference between like the mid-priced sushi and the super, super high-priced sushi that has been um, brought to you by belly dancers wearing real <laughs> pearl necklaces, black pearl necklaces from the sea, that fish is both coming from the same place. It's gonna taste the same even without all those bells and whistles. So, a lot of things in life, again, are like sushi. Microphones are like sushi. If you go with a bottom of the basement, you know, $19 Super Groupon special microphone, it's gonna sound like a $19 Super Groupon <laughs> microphone. But if you're looking for an entry mic and you're looking for something like a Snowball or a, a you know, a, a Baby Blue or a Yeti, um, any of these USB microphones that probably run between like $79 and $140, like you're in a good place. You're in a, you're in a good place for like the good, good stuff. You don't need to spend $2,000 on a microphone. What was your microphone again? Mine is a Neumann, uh, but I also record sometimes with an AKG C414. I know it does, it's not, I promise. Um, and uh, what I like about that mic is because I have a higher voice. And those are, those are both cardioid microphones, not shotgun microphones. Um, but what I like about those two microphones is that because I have a higher voice and not always a lot, I don't have a lot of bass in my voice, um, they really are able to pick up a lot of that subtlety and still make it feel grounded and really rich, which is nice. And there are standard broadcast mics, yes. Yeah, hardest, like, hardest line you've ever had to do, like, either it was so funny you would laugh in the middle of it. Oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> everybody here, does everybody here know who Sean Schemmel is? Yeah, yeah. Sean Schemmel uh, plays Goku on uh, Dragon Ball Z, and Sean and I work together a lot, and it's not always, okay, so you don't always get the pleasure and privilege of working in a voiceover booth with other actors. And when I'm in a booth with Sean, we, we tend to exhaust the air out of the room, like really fast. Uh, we suck all the air right out of that room because we're just, we get big and we have so much fun recording together. Um, now, you're in a booth, you're in a small space, you're recording, you're doing your work, and uh, you've been in the booth for a while, and it's getting a little hot, maybe, or you're, you're getting a little warm, and you start to get a little slap happy. So, Sean and I were in the booth, and there was another actress in there as well, and it was totally innocent project, and I don't remember the name of the project that we were working on, but the line that he had to ask me, he was asking me questions, he was trying to guess what object I was talking about, and I, the lines were, is it big? 
Is it hard? Is it long? Is it smooth? Yes, it's a sandwich. And we couldn't get through it. I mean, I, I don't remember which one of us was saying, but like of all the things that we were trying to like go through in our heads, it just wasn't uh, working. The point is like, you know, it's a baseball bat. You know, it could have been anything. We, we didn't know. Um, but uh, anything. It, it really, when you get into the booth and you work with people and you just get silly with them, and sometimes it just takes you a while to like focus back up. And I feel like there have been a couple of times where something gets to me because I embrace my weirdness. Guys, the second I realized that being my weird self was okay, I was so much happier. Like, I just stopped caring about like trying to be what I thought everybody wanted me to be. So sometimes I'll read something and it like cracks me up and I'll be like, <sighs> and my engineer or my director will be like, what? I'll be like, <laughs> um, but working with Sean, that was, that's actually a memory. I, we couldn't get through that, could not get through that day. Rest of the day was a mess. It was great, we had a great time. I, um, I just wanted to ask, like, do you have any advice for getting past, like, nerves or jitters, like, getting to the studio and, like, recording? Absolutely. Um, practice. I think the thing that makes me nervous for any situation is when there are things that uh, are unknown. Um, ways to combat nerves is to be prepared. So more practice, more preparation. Looking at a problem uh, to find a solution from all different angles. Um, when you walk into a room, you never know what's going to be on the other side of a door. And that's, that's frightening for anything. You know, you're talking about being a drama teacher. Um, voice acting is the same thing. So trusting yourself, realizing um, that as long as you make a choice, go strong and wrong if you need to. But make a choice so that you can walk in and say, uh, I'm, you know, happy day. But it was strong, you know, and you made a choice and you were very specific. So make a choice, be strong, be confident, fake it till you make it. <laughs> Truly. And I do feel that preparation is the best way to get over nerves and jitters. Uh, do you remember the first time you raised your hand? You know, you know, it's, it can be very nerve wracking to do that. Any other questions before we all head out? Yes. Okay, so what you just said is you said monotone, and then you said emotionless. You are never, monotone is, is the result of a certain type of emotion. So instead of saying monotone or emotionless, try apathetic. Try, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess. I could. Maybe. It's hard to say, because it's sounding like lazy or bored. All right, well, I mean, fine. <laughs> I guess. So, um, it's a great question, and I think it's always very specific. If that's a type of character that you've come across more than once, start trying to play with your affectations. So instead of going, uh, that's fine, try, that's fine. Uh, work with, um, you know, changing it up a little bit, and think one thing while saying another. So maybe you're saying, uh, sure, you can have a cookie, but you're thinking, um, could you just move a little to the left? I'm trying to watch the TV. Uh, so maybe that sounds like, uh, uh, sure, you could have a cookie. Uh, you know, but play with it a little bit and try to put um, some, some backstory into the character. Never one dimensional, never just monotone. That's not always a strong direction. Sometimes that's direction that voiceovers uh, you know, that, that you'll get, but that's, you need to go further as an actor than just that. Yes, in the back. Oh, sure. Sorry. She's giving it up to you. Um, I see like sometimes on, um, on special features, you see like voice actors are watching the TV and they're, they're watching like the cartoon that they're voicing over. Yeah. Like, I guess watching the actions on screen and um, doing voiceovers over that. How is that like? Uh, to watch, to watch, um, 
um, the, the, the you animation, animation while, uh, while you're... Oh my god! Well, sometimes it's super exciting because you get to see what it looks like and it really helps nail that. And sometimes it's super limiting because you're stuck doing what they've already drawn. Um, so, it, you know, it can go both ways. Hopefully, if you're lucky enough to have been in a project from the beginning, you get to be a part of that um, and have created some of those motions and they've, they've taken it off of you. Um, but that's not always the case. Guys, I have to say, I've, I've gotten the, the ear, I've gotten the, the nod. If this were TV, it would have been flashing and they would have cut me off at the Oscars already. Thank you all so very much for coming in. I'll be downstairs later. I hope